everybody, it's Tyler here at Vax World checking in with MC Jero TC team from Granbury. This is 11775A, and they're doing phenomenal so far here on the field. Rocking an H tier hang. We'll be talking about a lot of great stuff that goes into this robot here, from the odometry that goes into it, the team management as well, too. A lot of little things I want you to pay attention to and changes that they made to get ready for Vax Worlds. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Marcus, let's talk about, I think, one of the key features of the robot is that H-tier hang. So I'd love to hear more about when your team put this on the robot and how it's working out so far. All right. Yes, sir. So our H-tier hang, we first developed it, uh, I'd say, about a month or so ago. We started off with, in the beginning, a cascade lift. Cascade lift was our, our first design choice, which didn't really work because of friction and a lot of other things like that. So we decided to move to a C-tier hang that just grabbed the bar. But we noticed as the new meta came out, uh, our last competition at State, we ran into Inception 2029C. They gave us the idea for uh, an HDR hang. So we decided to put this together. It's like a similar to a two-stage blocker. The main feature I like about the uh, hang though is our guides here. So we use this hook connected to two strings down to a, a winch down here. And so when we get our hook in, we activate this PTO, which connects to our drivetrain, which is five motors or 55 watts. It's oh, no, six motors, never mind. Uh, we had half motors on our drivetrain, but not anymore. And so we use these guides to hook in, and then we uh, activate the PTO, and we're able to pull ourselves up. And we have a uh, ratchet hidden away in here that connects to this gear, and that allows us to lock our position in when we get high enough up on the uh, bar. And that's the main portion of our robot, the main feature. Something I want to ask you uh, with these guys in here too, like when you have these on, like how long does it actually take you to climb typically? Because I watched your last match, it seems like you're going pretty quick. So it, it varies depending on how long it takes us to hook, but usually right after we get it hooked in, it'll only take uh, maybe 10 seconds to get to the top where we need to activate our ratchet. Um, like last time we started at 30 seconds and we still had 15 seconds left in the match before we needed to um, activate the ratchet and then we just we hang there for the rest of the game can we see what that ratchet and pto looks like yes sir a lot of power there and like i said i watched your last match looking phenomenal on that uh as well too some congratulations again there because so many teams have struggled to get an effective hang a lot of teams have been you know we've been seeing build it but then their lineup takes too long or something else goes wrong. So congratulations to your team for having a great aspect of that as well, too. Uh, let's pass it over to Ryan, uh, by the way, to talk more about uh, some of the strategy behind your robot, some different building aspects. Well, you know, especially for Vex Rules, I want to ask you here, when you're uh, coming in, we were talking earlier that your team is really building for success and looking at the big show here. So talk to me more about how your approach was here at Vex Rules. Of course. So uh, when it comes to strategy, uh, we opted in for a really fast drive train. So we did six motors for the drive. Uh, Essentially, our main strategy during match play is to uh, do a strategy called bowling, which essentially we uh, drop tri balls on the front of our intake and uh, push them into the goal. Um, uh, another little key uh, thing to our intake is this, it's actually uh, attached to our uh, hang. So what our intake does is it moves up with the tri balls so um, other teams cannot uh, steal them from us. Um, some other little building aspects with our robot, we actually have two sets of flaps. So you can actually just, yeah. so we have the, the front flaps and then the back flaps. Uh, this again, allows us to just have a lot of maneuverability around the field. So it doesn't really matter which way we're facing, we're still gonna have control of those tri balls, which is really important uh, match play. Um, and honestly, yeah, those are just the main things. On your wings, I gotta ask you on here, it looks like you know you have a little bit more compliance with these because they're pneumatic, right? Uh, versus that side looks very rigid. Do you find yourself, uh, like depending on what the situation is, purposely pushing from one side or the other, or does it not really matter? So um, actually, with our front flaps, they're actually a pretty, um, I guess, uh, straightforward. So there's almost really no give in our front flaps. But most of the time, we actually just use, use the back flaps since there is no give on these. And then um, with our front flaps, 
The main priority with these are just to push tri balls over the middle barrier and just control the uh, tri balls. So if you look at the um, flaps, they're pretty generic, but they're uh, slightly curved. Yeah, there you go. They're slightly bent up to allow the tri balls to go up the uh, polycarb and then over the middle barrier. Let's pass over to Zachary and talk about on this side some of the programming aspects you need. Teams running odometry as well, too. So I'd love to hear some of your auto functions, how those work out, and how it's been implemented on your robot. Yes, sir. So just as you said, uh, we do incorporate odometry. This can be seen just back here. We have a vertical tracking wheel here and a horizontal tracking wheel here. Uh, it's pretty standard odometry. They're just uh, free spinning, so they are not driven by a motor, and they are attached to a rotational sensor so that we can accurately measure. Uh, the amount of rotations each wheel has done and then calculate the distance with that. Uh, in order to account for drift, we also incorporate the inertial sensor into it. So I have two separate layers, one that pretty much uses a the equivalent of a zero tracking wheel odom and the tracking wheel odom to average them out to find the value. So another thing that I had incorporated was an ability to arc to a point. So pretty much what it does is it uses your robot starting point and the plotted point that you want to arc to, and it generates a parabol parabolic arc that connects the two points and plots points along the way. And the robot will individually hit each point with a look ahead distance in order to fluidly uh, go to the next point. Uh, it's similar to Pure Pursuit. However, one of the main differences is the ability to use it purely in the programming and not using any external programs. Uh, and that's about it. How do you see that evolving for you in future years as well too? Yes, sir. So I'm currently a senior, uh, so I myself won't be able to. However, I'm providing the documentation of all of my like research, to, so to say, uh, to Hadaway or Marcus here. And with that, um, I'm planning on helping him guide throughout the end of the year until I'm fully done with this year. Uh, making it where it uses a Bezier curve instead of just a parabolic arc. So you'd be able to plot out multiple different points and it would heat, hit each individual point, but it would give a more range of motion than say a, like the current parabolic, which is basically a quadratic equation. I'm glad to hear that you're passing on knowledge down as well too. I think that's one of the super important yes. things in VEX is make sure you do that as well. Let's pass over to Renee to wrap up here. Talk about team management, Renee. How are you uh, incorporating your role into this team to make sure everything's functioning properly? Um, well, my role in the team is uh, lead noteworker, but I also do a lot of team management. Since unfortunately this year I can't have the robotics class period, uh, but these boys during the class period have a daily login plan. It's basically a giant log book on uh, spreadsheets that logs out everything that they've done and what they plan to do and what they finish during the class period daily. And let me ask you about Notebook. Is there anything in particular in the Notebook putting the others here that you're really proud of that you want to talk about? Um, I'm really proud of um, the communication since, like I said, I don't have that class period. We have really well communication to get a fluid Notebook working. Awesome. Well, hey, Granberry MC, GROTC, phenomenal job so far here at Vex Worlds. We wish you best of luck all the way through and appreciate you telling us more about your team and your robot as well, too. Best of luck and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.